The Ugly American was a book written in 1958 by William J. Lederer and Eugene Burdick. It was highly controversial when it came out because of the negative perspective that it has of Americans in international relations. The book is a collection of parables that explore the implications of how Americans throughout history have attempted to affect influence in international markets. The theme of the book is essentially this. If you aim to affect change ethically, you might actually be more effective in affecting change. So now I'm going to look at some of the characters throughout the book and we're going to discuss some of the ethical decision-making lessons that they may have benefited from as we've talked about throughout the course of the semester in Professor Fitzpatrick's class. First of all, Louis Krupitsin is the perfect example of expertise. He's the Russian ambassador to Sarkhan and he learns the language. He really immerses himself. Just like we talk about in the PRSA Code of Ethics, it's really important to be an expert and to hold that to a really high standard. But he lies to the Sarkhanese about a shipment of rice claiming that it comes from Russia instead of the U.S. like it actually did. Taking all of the credit for this violates both honesty, fairness, and transparency tenets in the PRSA Code of Ethics. There's also, if you were to apply this to business, um, it would be important to, before you provide any sort of intellectual property to a client, set up some sort of agreement saying that if they are not purchasing your ideas or your um, plans, that they are not going to use them without your permission. Another character, Father Finian. He's the priest that works to allow everybody in Sarkhan to make their own decisions and inform themselves, take them on their own paths um, to righteousness or whatever they consider the truth to be. It is your country, your souls, your lives, as he says. This is a really great example of the marketplace of ideas. He suggests that as many voices as possible can contribute to the truth, that it takes everybody's voice and everybody's contribution to come to some sort of conclusion about what reality and what truth is. Gilbert McWhite is immersed in the culture and he learns the language, but he makes the mistake of telling his Chinese servants, Donald and Roger, that he's there to combat communism. This brings up a really great point in the ethics class that we've talked about of safeguarding confidences. It's incredibly important in public relations and communications when you are in possession of really important high profile information to safeguard that information because you are both a stakeholder in it and you have the responsibility to your employers, to publics, to safety of others um, and the safety of the business, the profitability of the business to hold that information uh, close to your chest or um, at whatever level of privacy that it should be. This also brings up the point of balancing loyalties, that it's incredibly important to consider what your company needs in this situation, what your boss needs in this situation, what you need, what the community needs, and what's going to benefit all of these different stakeholders. Thomas Knox. He uses his Iowan farm knowledge to help Cambodian farmers with their chicken and egg yields. He's highly successful and he's very proud of himself, but when he isn't noticed by the United States government, he forgets about helping them and takes advantage of the other countries that are giving him attention for his success. At first, it's a great example of the free flow of information, using your knowledge to enable others and allow them to make their own decisions is often one of the best practices in ethical decision making. So let's pretend that Thomas Knox is doing public relations for the government of the United States. He has all of this knowledge about chicken and egg yields, and he seeks to help Cambodian farmers. He tells the truth, he proves it with action, he listens to stakeholders, but he doesn't exactly consider to manage for tomorrow because he has pretty selfish intentions. Step number five of, Arthur pa of the Arthur Page principle says that you conduct public relations as if the enterprise depends on it. And in some sense, the U.S. government does depend on that enterprise being handled properly and represented well and carried out effectively. Number six, an enterprise's true character is expressed by its people, and Tom would be one of those people. Number seven, remain calm, patient, and good-humored, and Tom did not do that. He got really proud of himself, and as soon as he didn't receive the attention that he felt he deserved, he decided to go off on his own. Another character, Captain Boning, 
He lets Solomon Ash down when he makes it seem like he's purposefully withholding information within a negotiation with the Asian people. That isn't great for PR, it isn't ethical, and it isn't effective in negotiations. This brings up the great point of balancing loyalties to employers and to publics. Understanding what you are trying to gain in a negotiation, as well as what you owe to the people that are, that are participating in that negotiation is extremely necessary in ethical negotiating and decision making and business practices. Emma Atkins is another character. She learns by observing that the short-handled brooms that the Sarkinese people use are hard on their backs. So she manages to develop a long-handled broom, and that fixes their problem, helps them stand up straight, even though they don't take her very seriously. So if Emma was following SOX, S-O-C-S, she would consider stakeholders, options, consequences, and strategy. First, she considers her stakeholders. She takes into account everything that they need, all of their daily actions, and she uh, tries to understand how they live and all of, all of the you know, intricacies of, of the broom and what is contributing to their back pain. She considers her options a short handle or a long handle. The consequences of the short handle mean that they have to bend over a lot. So her strategy for fixing that is to give them a short handle. Finally, Jonathan Brown, Senator Jonathan Brown, visits Sarkhan and expects to see the country to understand what USAID is actually doing there. Aides, fire, aides hire false interpreters as to not show him the true realities of the country, so he doesn't really know what's going on. Once back in the U.S. at a hearing, McWhite offers that the Soviets might win the Cold War because of American inabilities to connect with local communities that they need to maintain relationships with. This points out that the power of dynamics of advocacy are complicated. Sometimes it's hard to stand up and be the ethical counsel when administration thinks that they know the right way to do things. Small decisions add up to larger problems. Ethics must be considered at every level of the decision making from person to person. Everybody within the organization must be on the same page of ethical decision making in order to make sure that the outcome is also ethical. Though this book isn't all about public relations ethics, it does provide perfect insight into how corporate social responsibility can come into play in international playing fields. Balancing relationships with and loyalties to employers, publics, and other stakeholders is absolutely necessary. Considering the larger impact of your decisions is the most important. Ethics are tricky, but by considering yourself along the way, you can provide your company with ethical counsel as a PR professional is obliged and obligated to do.